Hi, welcome back. I'm Cheryl Dennison Himmelfarb, and today I will be focusing on complexity in healthcare and the need for a systems approach to improve patient safety. The objectives of this talk are to explain what is meant by the terms complex system and systems approach or systems thinking as they relate to healthcare, and to describe the factors that contribute to healthcare system failures. Healthcare is a very complex system. A system is any collection of two or more interacting parts or an interdependent group of items that form a unified whole. Healthcare, as I've said, is a very complex system. In fact, the Institute of Medicine report reminds us that healthcare is probably the most complex of human endeavors. With increased complexity comes an increased chance of defect or for errors to actually reach the patient. Because healthcare is so very complex and has so many interacting and interdependent parts, it's actually very difficult to predict, based on a knowledge of just one component of the system, what the behaviors or even the outcomes of the system will be. That's why we really must consider the whole system um, when, we can, when we are looking for opportunities to improve patient safety. So this um, diagram depicts some of the components of the healthcare system that contribute to the complexity. So you see technology and tools persons or the individuals involved in health care. That, that includes not only the providers in the health system, but also the patients and their families. The organization, the actual, the tasks or the work of health care, as well as the environment. And you can see there are many intersections and interactions among these components of the health care system. The components of the health care system through effect on healthcare processes, impact patient, individual, and organizational outcomes. So you can see that to identify opportunities to improve healthcare safety, we really must consider complexity and the interrelations of these many components of the healthcare system. Systems are composed, as I've mentioned, of multiple interconnected components, people, machines, processes, and data. Systems thinking holds that each component may directly or indirectly affect not only the function of the system as a whole, but also the functions of the other components. System failures can result in defects in healthcare. So system failures, system failures among any of the comp or within any component of the complex system can actually exacerbate or worsen functioning of the system as a whole. This slide um, or this diagram provided by Ken and Palil demonstrates that complexity increases as the number of components of a system increase and the degree of interconnected or interrelatedness among the components increases. So you can see that the healthcare system with a very large number of interacting components and an extremely high degree of interrelatedness among the components would be up in the very high in the, the fourth quadrant with an extre extremely high level of complexity. In order to create a self -health safe healthcare environment for our patients, we really must transition from a person's approach, which we've taken historically, to a systems approach. So in, a, in the person's approach, um, which many of our systems have taken in the, many of the healthcare systems have taken in the past, and unfortunately, um, it, this remains prevalent in many areas today. The focus is on individuals and blaming individual providers in particular for forgetfulness, inattention, or carelessness 
um, as well as poor production when errors occur. Methods to improve safety or reduce errors using this person-based approach include poster campaigns, writing another procedure, disciplinary measures, holding the individual who's made an error accountable, threat of litigation or lawsuits, retraining, and blaming and shaming the individuals who have made errors. In this system, the target often is the individual provider. However, in the systems-based approach, which we found to be much more effective in promoting a safe healthcare environment, the focus is on the conditions and the environment in which individuals work. There's a focus on building fault tolerance within the system, in, within the system of work to reduce harm or to mi mitigate the effects of an error when it does occur. Methods to improve patient safety in this approach or to reduce errors focuses on creating a better system and eliminating, reducing or eliminating the opportunity for errors to actually reach the patient when they do occur. The target in this approach is the system. So the focus is on the healthcare team, tasks that, tasks involved in the delivery of healthcare, the workplace environment, um, the organization, and so the, the physical environment of work in the organization. There are numerous factors that can contribute to a safe or problematic healthcare system. Seven major factors that contribute to system failures are institutional, hospital, departmental factors, the work environment, individual provider factors, task factors, and as well as patient characteristics. Each of these system factors can directly or indirectly impact patient safety. So some specific examples of these system failures um, that may occur within an organization. Um, so at the institutional level, for example, leadership involvement in safety efforts is critical. A lack of leadership involvement can directly impact patient safety efforts in a very negative way. Managerial and organizational decisions or lack of decisions that shape the working conditions can impact patient safety. The work environment, including production pressures, um, a, a focus on keeping patients moving or increasing flow through a clinical setting, interruptions, work conditions, and unit norms that may actually promote um, negative behavior. Individual provider factors really focus on those things that we all bring to our job each day that can potentially limit our performance. These may be inadequate sleep, um, pressures and stress from home, and, and it also can involve um, relationships, uh, positive or negative, with our colleagues at work. Task factors include communication or coordination about the plan of a patient's care, um, the presence of protocols or other approaches to standardize and um, systematize uh, the care processes, as well as patient factors, really any factor that might limit a patient's ability to participate in care. Reason has offered this Swiss cheese model, which is commonly used as an analogy for systems thinking. In this model, you see the slice of cheese, which represents barriers to protect the, this, to protect the system from allowing errors to reach the patient. The second part of this model, um, these are the holes in the cheese. These, are, these represent defects in care that, um, that might contribute to, or system factors that might contribute to patient harm. And you see three with the red arrow going through the holes in the cheese, and this represents the trajectory that occurs when those defects line up and allow patient harm to actually reach the patient. And then the fourth 
component of the model, which is the adverse event, occurs when that trajectory lines up and the defects are allowed to reach the patient and the patient suffers harm. So let's consider a case study to demonstrate a systems approach using the Swiss cheese model. So consider the case of a patient who requires discontinuation of a central line or a large IV in the neck. Often it's in the neck. Um, the, the resident or the, the medical doctor in training proceeds to pull the central line or remove the central line while the patient is sitting up comfortably in a chair because the, the resident has seen this done many times before. And as you know, unfortunately, in medical care or in medical training, um, often we use the see one, do one, teach one approach, which means that you watch an experienced provider do this. And once you've seen it done, you're qualified to do it. Once you do it, often you're viewed as qualified to teach another um, provider to do it. The nurse in the room observed this happening, um, but didn't speak up. And as a consequence, the patient suffered a venous air embolism, a major complication. So upon review of the case, the following system defects are noted. So these are the holes in the cheese, in the Swiss cheese model. The system actually was perfectly designed to produce air embolisms. So this reinforces the notion that each system is perfectly designed to achieve the outcomes that it does indeed achieve. So in this case, the nurse was aware that correct positioning for patients having a central line pulled was in the flat position. But the nurse failed to speak up because she didn't want to be yelled, yelled at and she'd had a prior experience, negative experience, with that physician. There was no standard protocol for discontinuation of central lines. So the see one, do one, teach one approach that was applied in this case um, really is not a reliable training modality. There was no required certification for the provider to know the process for discontinuing the line or confirming that um, he understood the standard approach and the, the approved approach evidence-based approach for removing a central line um, at the lowest risk to the patient. So we see with the Swiss cheese model each of these um, potential defects lining up resulting in harm to the patient. So the catheter was pulled with the, the patient sitting up and the there was ineffective communication between the nurse and the resident, and there was a lack of protocol for catheter removal, and there was inadequate training and supervision of the medical resident. This resulted in harm to the patient or a venous, the patient experiencing a venous air embolism. So what you see here is demonstration that for an error, according to systems thinking, we must consider the multiple factors within the system that contributed to the error. And you see that each of those potential defects had to line up with no checks and balances to allow the error to reach the, pa the patient. If any one of these steps had um, not occurred, or I'm sorry, in either, any of these defects had not occurred, then that error might not have reached the patient. That's taking the system's approach, not blaming the medical resident immediately, but stepping back and looking at what were the factors that contributed to the error in a more comprehensive approach. So using a systems thinking approach, an opportunity, there are many opportunities to improve patient safety. And so the key principles of safe design for you to consider are standardizing care, which involves simplifying the processes, the healthcare processes, and eliminating, eliminating steps where possible, using protocols and checklists to reinforce those standard, the standard approach according to evidence-based guidelines, creating independent double checks. So at least two separate individuals who are reviewing the process and ensuring that the protocols are being 
um, followed. And importantly, when things do go wrong, which they will, learning from those defects, examining what happened, why did it happen, what did you do, and, and then considering what was done to reduce the risk, risk of this occurring, and then considering um, if we make changes to reduce risk, how will we know that it worked? How will we know that we've actually reduced the risk of that error occurring again and reaching another patient? So, in conclusion, taking a systems approach involves examining the complex interrelated systems that are or in interrelated components of our healthcare system and not taking a person's-based approach and blaming individuals, but considering the individuals involved in healthcare as one component of the very complex healthcare system. Observe those processes and reflect on how the systems are working and importantly, where they are not working. Work to mitigate defects. So identify those opportunities to standardize processes um, develop protocols, checklists, promote teamwork, create independent checks, and most importantly, learn from the mistakes that do occur so that we can reduce the risk of those mistakes occurring again. Share what you've learned. Share what you've learned within your organization and beyond your organization because the errors that are occurring in your environment, I can assure you, are occurring in our environment and many others as well. Collaborate with the team, and most importantly, each individual must speak up and be a valued member of the healthcare team and the healthcare system.